It's Thursday, the 6th of April, and I'm Juan Brown, and you're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. The press briefing is about to start in one hour where they're going to reveal the big plan. What's the plan for the Orville Spillway? What's the temporary plan to get us through next flood season? And what's the long-term plan to correctly restore and rebuild the spillway here at Orville? Let's go check it out. This better be good. I even shaved and put on a clean shirt today. So here's what the uh, plan is probably not going to look like by November 1st. They want to rebuild this upper section, but they're also going to rebuild the lower section and connect it. And this section, this, this, this canyon is only going to be used in the event of uh, basically an emergency where they need to spill a whole lot of water, upwards of over 150,000 CFS. I'll double check the numbers from the briefing. But anyways, by 1 November, we should see a whole nother spillway that very closely replicates the spillway that was once there. So starting at the upper section here, you get a new upper spillway. The um, plunge pool here gets filled with RCC, roller compacted concrete. At the same time, they build a lower section. This lower section for next year is only going to be capable of 100,000 CFS. And then after next year, they'll build the walls higher to this lower section so that it can handle the full design capacity of the new design. Here's the emergency spillway concept. Here's the original emergency spillway wall with no footing. They're going to add the roller compacted concrete buttress to the downstream side of the emer existing emergency spillway then RCC splash pad all the way down to a cutoff wall which is going to go quite deep into bedrock and then they'll go back to just earth after the cutoff wall and this distance from here to here has yet to be determined that's for the emergency spillway plan Again, these plans are just concepts at this point, and these concepts are continually evolving. Sometimes when you're lumped in with all the rest of the media, you can really feel like you <laughs> kind of get the bums rush when it comes to these big media events. Uh, they get you in there, they tell you what they want to tell you, and then they run you out of there pretty quick before you can really get to the bottom of a lot of questions and and often their presentations simply lead to more questions than answers that being said uh the dwr information spokesperson lauren biznet has been very accommodating and helpful with getting information thanks lauren Well, shoot, I stumped him. I didn't mean to stump him. I was just asking about the river valve outlet system. Just got back from the press briefing on the new design concept for the Oroville Spillway. Um, yes, actually, we should have it, all the control systems put in, I understand, the first week in May. So the idea is to be able to use that sometime in May or June if needed. And is the RVOS Um, I, I don't know the, the nuances of that. 
that's a good question. And, and we do have people here that can answer that. I just can't answer that question. Regarding the river valve outlet system, the question I asked at the press briefing, Bill Croyle said, yeah, they expect to have that system up and operating by May this year. The deadline for the initial repair or restoration of this spillway is November of this year. But the part that stumped him about the river valve outlet system was, uh, my question was, can you operate that under high head pressure? Can you operate the river valve outlet system in conjunction with the Hyatt power plant located right up there when the lake level is up high, like 860 feet? He didn't know. So the uh, information officer, Lauren Biznet, is going to hopefully get me that information because that's an extra 5,000 CFS. If you could operate, if you could add that 5,000 CFS to the present Hyatt power plant flow of 10,000 CFS, you'd have enough outflow to almost match the inflows right now at Oroville Reservoir. The new plan for the busted spillway here at Oroville basically replicates the old plan, only built to modern specifications. No fancy new ideas, no fancy new different kind of engineering technologies are going to be put into place. They're going to be doing about two to three years worth of work in nine, in nine months. The plan is to take that upper spillway, remove and replace it as necessary to build a new spillway that is capable of 270,000 CFS flow, 270,000 cubic feet per second flow. In the plunge pool there, they plan to fill that with RCC, roller compacted concrete. And for the lower spillway, they plan on building and connecting the lower spillway to the upper spillway with a lower spillway that has a capacity by November of about 100,000 CFS. In other words, they won't have the walls quite as high or as completed on the lower portion of the spillway as they will for the upper portion. The concept or idea being that if in the event they got to crank this upper new spillway next year up to 100, up to and beyond 160,000 CFS, they're going to utilize the, the new canyon as the basically the emergency overflow for this main spillway. So by 1 November, you're going to see, theoretically, we're going to see a new spillway all the way through here with the lower half having lower walls and less capacity only 100,000 CFS capacity and in the event that they need to use the canyon here to your right as the emergency overflow meanwhile emergency work is done on the emergency spillway but during the same time period by 1 November there'll be a whole bunch of roller compacted concrete rolled onto the face of the emergency spillway and a new cutoff wall added so that the emergency spillway will be able to work as well. With the basic idea of managing the reservoir so that you never have to use the emergency spillway again. Contingency plans for this design concept are if they run out of time the, the priority is going to be on the upper spillway. Get that upper spillway repaired, replaced, built enough to handle the flow for next winter and just terminate it there at the end with additional roller compacted concrete and allow the water to flow right down through the new canyon. But the idea is to connect the two by next November. And the path is cleared to cut the red tape. They claim they'll still be, everything will be done in compliance with all the rules and regulations, but the skids are greased for a very fast process. Remember too, the levees downstream can only handle about 160,000 CFS flow, but this 270,000 CFS design concept is in the event of an extreme flood event. Yeah, it'll. It'll cause problems downstream if they need to flow more than 160,000 CFS out of Oroville, but the entire objective is to save the dam.
starting to rain a little bit got to get my coat and hat you can't be in the band if you ain't got a hat so right now the reservoir stands at about 845 feet 16 to 18,000 CFS in and 10,000 CFS out of the Hyatt power plant. Bill Croyle stressed that the flows coming out of the Hyatt power plant will fluctuate as they do different maintenance tasks on different, different turbines. By the way, that number one turbine that is out of commission, it's pulled out and completely out of state, getting totally rebuilt with a whole new turbine, turbine that'll require quite a bit less maintenance. Once they get number one unit back in, Number three and I think number four units are scheduled next to be removed and basically replaced or rebuilt to a whole new design standard. We have a strong winter storm moving in this weekend. Uh, it's going to be about a four day event resulting in about four inches of rain, I would guess, up in the uh, up in the mountain watershed. They're expecting inflows to peak at maybe 39,000 CFS and then drop back down to 18,000 CFS. So at a reservoir level of 845 feet, there's plenty of room for this storm. So speaking of the time constraints here, there are four pre-selected contractors and they are going to have to have their bids submitted by the 12th of April, the 12th of this month. And they want to begin to execute the contract beginning the 17th of this month on the repair and restoration of this spillway with the idea of having an operable spillway by 1 November. Whether it's a complete spillway or just the upper half of the spillway. For those of you that live here in the affected area, there's gonna be a series of community outreach meetings. The first one being April 27th, Thursday, April 27th at the Butte County Fairgrounds from 6 to 8 p.m. A great opportunity to get up there and ask and answer questions about what's going on here at Oroville and what the different contingency plans are for those that live downstream. Two big questions that remain unanswered at this time is how much is this going to cost? Nobody knows, nobody's willing to venture to guess. And how high are they gonna fill the reservoir this year for this year's recreation? That's yet to be determined also based on a lot of input from a lot of different folks. The idea of critical energy infrastructure information came up in two different, uh, on two different points today. One is the details of the bids for the, this project is going to be considered critical energy infrastructure information. So, so the kind of details that are inside the bids will not be released to the public. The general design concept, of course, is. Also, kind of more disturbing is the, uh, the results of what the board discovers from what caused this accident. Some of that information is gonna be on a need to know basis. And according to Bill, that information is gonna be vetted through the folks here and then passed on to um, the Butte County Sheriff, Honey, Corey Honey, and then he will be in charge of releasing the findings to the public. So kind of an interesting twist on that. With regards to the rebuilding of this structure, I saw nothing today that indicated that they were gonna be re rebuilding the gate structure at the head of this spillway. We'll get more information on that soon, I hope. As far as the time frame for the report as to what caused this accident uh, was not discussed. However, the findings of that report are gonna go back into the redesign process of this structure. So I would hope they get that information out soon. Regarding the erosion at the head of the spillway that we pointed out uh, today in the, on the last report, yes, when things dry out some more, they are gonna be adding some more shock creep right up there to the head of the spillway before the next spill. And they're anticipating one or two more spills this season. So that's the basic concept for the recovery of the Oroville spillway. It's gonna be a hell of a show to get this done in nine short months, so stay tuned.